Live from Shadow Mirror Studios, it's the Talkie Box Podcast, Snap, Crackle, Pop. Just had to fit that one in. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? It's going. Yeah. It's going. Yeah. It is going great, Dave. It's going great. It's going great. So, this is the first time we've ever done this, where uh, neither Jason or Justin are here. Uh, Jason, Justin, and myself being the founding people of this podcast. Uh, they're both not here because they suck. So, I got <laughs> Jeremy. That's when you say something for the audio podcast, people know who we're talking to. Hi. And Kate. Hey. And I'm Dave. Are you really? No. That's good. Made that shit up. I didn't like Dave. It has been cold as shit. <laughs> yep. So, I don't like it. No. So it's our actually, heat broke earlier. Yeah, the heat in the studio slash house that we live in broke. And it's somehow colder in the house than it is outside. Yeah, it's beautiful outdoors. It is. It was like 60 degrees. We should, there. We should have filmed out there. That's too, <laughs> that's too much. But it's dark out there. Mm, true. Too much? Too yeah. much degrees? Yeah. 60? Too many. <laughs> you prefer it cold? Oh, yes. Really? Less yeah. degrees, please. I actually prefer it cold, too. Not in my, not in my home. You are weird, man. Where I live, well, I mean, but... you see, like, just the amount of hair on my body. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't. This is like, it's only been like the past couple days I've actually had to wear something other than a hoodie mm-hmm. because it's been too cold. Yeah. Like, I could wear a hoodie and jeans mm. just forever. Same. I, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I'd much rather be hot than cold. Why? Yeah. I, that's just how, who I am. I don't know. My theory is, though, with when you're cold, you know, you can keep putting on layers. When I you're only hot, have, that's there's the only so many you can take off. That's what everybody <laughs> says. But I only have so much clothes I can put on. Like before, you know, you can't move because you're in too many clothes. But I, I'll get naked. I don't care. Anywhere. Pretty much. Kids petting zoo. You'll get naked. The the, it the, is the, a the petting zoo. <laughs> <laughs> the animals are naked. <laughs> you heard it here first. I did. I haven't done that. <laughs> As not, he looks around nervously. I'm not saying I would. Um, uh. Not because it's a sexual thing, but because I'm hot. I mean, is it maybe just a little bit of a sexual thing to you? Though? No. Do you want the goats to see, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Not the goats. Do you want them to have a reason to scream? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, screaming goats. That's weird. Terrifying. Would you rather have a screaming goat or one of those fainting goats? Oh my gosh, those fainting goats. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, because the fainting ones, at least you don't have to deal with just the occasional <laughs> death scream. Like, oh my god, what was? It's <laughs> my goat. <laughs> Do they do that just like out of nowhere or do yes, they have a they reason for it? they just scream. It's, it's not because like, oh, there's an intruder. It's just like, <laughs> ah, no, that would be, that'd be useful. <laughs> that would. They just make noises. Yeah. All right. <laughs> didn't we used, to, didn't, were, were we talking about trying to get a goat at the restaurant we used to work at? Um, I said a dog, but then everyone in the kitchen was like, no. <laughs> That's right. Goat. We want a dog for some reason. We want a goat so it would eat everything that fell on the floor. A dog would also do that and it'd be a lot more fun. But if the dog ate like, part of like a glass that broke you have to take the dog to the vet but if a goat does it it's a goat and goats do that <laughs> but mm-hmm. to counter that we got rid of <laughs> all glass in the kitchen we yeah, had we only the plastic plates we did do that we went from from like having like ceramic stuff to mm-hmm. just plastic and it's funny because um i don't know if you had left at this point but uh it was like a sunday morning and then we heard a shatter and um oh yeah yeah our, our, our boss was i put i replaced everything that could break with plastic and they still somehow broke something <laughs> <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, some dishwasher like dropped one of the few ceramic bowls we still had and cut himself on it oh yeah riveting yeah way to go austin yeah, anyway just name calling now yeah i don't care he probably doesn't watch <laughs> <laughs> hmm. No, probably doesn't. So how's your week been? Uh, you know, fine. Yeah, fine. Kate? Yeah, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started a new show on HBO, so yeah? that's cool. What is it? Uh, it's Gunpowder. It's um, a historical is it about, period piece. Is it about guns? No, it's actually about Guy Fox and the conflict between the Presbyterian and the Catholic Church. In England? Mm-hmm. And it's super violent. Really? Super violent. Um, in the, I think, like, the first 30 minutes, some lady, she got pressed. Yeah. What do you mean pressed? Um, as in they took, like, big anvils 
and press them on her body until oh, she until she until she died. Until she got thin. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you hear it was it was nasty the whole time. I'm just like Aah! that sounds bad. Aah! I don't want any part of that. And I love you know. Pop. <laughs> I consider myself. I watch slashers and gore, but I wasn't right. I wasn't prepared for that because you hear the you hear the crunching. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not a big gore. Like I love horror movies and like mm -hmm. thrillers and stuff like that. But when it comes to, like torture porn and stuff, I just I can't deal with it. Yeah, I don't like I don't, uh, you know. Hostel. Well, there's a thing, a difference between a horror movie and a torture porn, Dave. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a, a big fan a, of the big, torture stuff either, though. It's a big yeah. Difference. There is, but they don't build them as different. No, they don't. Like you won't go to the movies. Like I'll see the torture porn one, please. <laughs> like, they, it's like oh, it's a horror movie. And you go in and you find out, like, oh, they're just cutting on people for no reason. This is great. Um, like, yeah. I think I think I saw Hostel in the theater, and, like, I really wish I hadn't. I don't know what Hostel is. Hostel? Really? Yeah. It's uh, it's about these kids that go backpacking through Europe, <clears throat> and they end up staying in this hostel and getting kidnapped and, like, taken to this place where, like, rich people pay money to, like, torture people. Oh. Because why and, not? And so you see a lot of that happening, and it's fucking disgusting. Okay. Uh, and it's just, like, really cringy. Like, one part, um, they, like, they, they untie this kid so he can get up to leave, but they'd art they cut, like, his, like, Achilles tendon stop. or something? You can stop now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I just oh, that oh, word. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> tendon? I don't know. No, like, yeah. Achilles? Oh, oh, oh. That yeah, noise Achilles. Is just I hate Achilles. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it was not pleasant to watch. And then they made a second one. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Or the Saw movies for me, I couldn't. See the Saw movies, I, I like do it. because I do it. the what I've always enjoyed about the Saw movies is that you don't see as much as you think you do. Like you, your brain puts a lot in there that's not actually in the movie, and and that's something I always enjoyed about those movies. Is that hmm. it's just one of those things. That it just it's psychological more than actual visual. See, like with horror movies, I can't. I don't like the the physical gore stuff. Like I like the supernatural horror movies because that's. Yeah. That's yeah. the ones that can actually be really, really scary rather than just, that was scary because I don't want to look at what I'm looking at. <laughs> rather than, you know, like just sitting there, if I close my eyes, something's going to get me. Yeah. I know there's something in that corner. This is the um, Fear Factor. Did you ever watch that? No, but I've. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Kate, you ever watch Fear Factor? Yeah. Fear Factor, when it first came out, I really enjoyed because it, like, it, was, it was like always three different things that people had to do and they tended to be scary things. But then eventually. They made the second one always be something that's just gross. It wasn't like, I'm afraid to do this. I'm like, that's disgusting and I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to eat balls of congealed blood. That was the thing they had to do. Oh. And it's fucking disgusting. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. And it's not because I'm afraid of it. It's gross. Well, you got to also think about, they just got the right people for that. Because, you know, you could say balls of congealed blood and someone would be like, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know there are those people out there. Yeah. So but, they'd be like, I'm getting... I'm getting paid for this. This is awesome. <laughs> this is a delicacy where I come from in the middle of Mississippi. Um, yeah, but I just, I could not, I don't know, eventually I was just like, this show is just stupid now. I can't, I can't be dealing with it. Yeah, I think in one episode someone had to drink urine. Gross. Yeah. Bear Grylls. I mean, yeah, he did that. He does that a lot. A lot? I mean, it's Bear Grylls. Like, you know, who's, <laughs> like who's every urine meal? is it? <laughs> I, I did they not say? Oh. Really? And I just think about that. I'm like, huh. I assume it's an animal's urine. Like, it yeah. wouldn't just be like, hey, go pee in this cup. We're going to give it to this dude on the show. Like, you don't know. They I don't pulled know. pulled one of the producers aside and been like, oh, hey. <laughs> or, <laughs> we need some pee, man. <laughs> or they just had everybody pee in something and they just it's make it. Oh, Maybe. Mm. I don't, I wish we hadn't gotten on this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's enjoying it. Uh, Someone out you're there. You're welcome. <laughs> There's going to be, like, one person eventually that yeah. just ever gets, like, super, super big who's going to be, like, rewatching or listening to old ones. And you're like, <laughs> this is for me. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad they did this. We're going to find, just keep finding comments. Can we talk about P again? <laughs> that was no. the best episode. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, now, you, you still work in a restaurant. Yeah. Do you enjoy that? Do you, like, is that... Is that something you really like doing? No. No? No. Mm. Jeremy? No. No. <laughs> no. I don't. I, got, I feel like it's always just been a means to an end for us. I like to imagine that before I worked in the restaurant business or retail or any aspect of customer service, that I might have actually liked people. Mm -hmm. 
And every year, that value diminishes <laughs> just a little bit more. Yeah. See, I just never liked people. Yeah. And then I got a retail job, and I'm like, I don't, like <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. But now you work in a kitchen where it's limited people you have to deal with. Yeah. So, yeah. good job on that, I guess. But it's, like, I'm indirectly still dealing with right. probably more people now. Yeah. You know. I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't. But we all do it because it's easy money. It's not. It is. I'm going to have gray hair by the time I leave. I've already got gray hair. Yeah, we are old. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's pretty easy money. Yeah. As a server, anyway. Mm. See, I don't do that. I cook. Mm. And that's not fun when no. it's non-stop, you know, ticket printing. Oh, it's not fun as a server either. It's just yeah. mostly easy. Unless you get those guests who, who sometimes I feel like they go in and they have like a personal challenge. Mm. Like, let's see how fast we can just make her deteriorate in front of us. How douchey can I be today? Yeah. Sometimes that's how it feels like with, with customers. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been, a, I've worked both, I've been worked, you know, with this, as a server and a cook. And sometimes it does feel like these, these guests and customers are just coming in just let me be the biggest dick I can be, you know? And I don't get it. Do you have any, like, really fucked up stories from, like, either either restaurant or retail? Hmm. I've got a good one. Yeah, go ahead and tell yours while you think about it. So this is not um, something I did. Mm -hmm. It was actually a story one of my managers told me when I used to work at a hibachi place. Yeah. And he was... Um... Uh... The manager was telling us a story about when he was a server at a previous hibachi place. And he is Chinese. And I guess he had some customers come in and they were talking down to him like he was stupid because he has a very thick Chinese accent. But in truth, he's very smart. Mm. It should also be noted that he has a terrible temper. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess he just had it. And this was back when he was a server and he was serving their table. And uh, they ordered the filet mignon or whatever. And he was like, okay. Well, uh, a lot of times at hibachi restaurants, what they do is they prep everything to get it ready to just put directly on the grill. Right. So they'll, um, you know, pre-soak the meat and whatever marinades they need to do and get everything prepped. Yeah. So he went back there and peed in the marinade. Oh, gross. And soaked the <gasps> How do we get back to urine? <laughs> and told the grill people to keep it that way. Yeah. And so his whole table got served. This That's urinated awful. on. That's Mignon. Jesus. I, for years... And by years, fact, so did everyone else because they don't clean the grill in between. They don't? Not super thoroughly. They do a thorough breakdown cleaning yeah. at night, but they do like a rough wipe hmm. in between, so... I assume it's burning off a lot of that urine taste. <laughs> oh, that's it terrible. It just tasted extra the... salty that day. Oh, God. Why? Yep. I for years I would be nice would, to your server, right? For, well, for years I, I had people who were like, "Yeah, I'm always nice to my server because I don't want them to mess with my food." And the worst thing I ever saw happen in a restaurant that a that a employee did was uh, they took a spoon for soup and dropped it on the ground and then picked it back up again. That's the worst I ever saw in my twelve years of restaurant work. And now you're telling me people are pissing in the. <laughs> In the meat marinades, and that's awful. I thought, I thought, you know, people were better than that. Yeah. Apparently not. Nope. <laughs> Did you have one? No. I mean, just the, you know, dealing with the, oh, yeah, can you do this, this, and this? Like, yeah, sure. Just, you know, pull the plate down and then act like you're doing something, yeah. you know? But no, nothing like peeing on a <laughs> steak. <laughs> you kind of you topped it off with, yeah, yeah. with your story. Like yeah, you sorry. set the bar for that. And really there's no, high. Yeah. No going over that. Yeah. Now, I've, I've definitely done what you said where like <clears throat> someone will send back their food like this isn't. Oh, know, yeah. Just like, replayed it. Or, yeah. I'll, I'll, I wouldn't even replay it. I would just kind of like move stuff around a little bit. Like, um, oh, can I, I get want, new vegetables? I want like, this no. made this way with this, this, and this. We don't do it that way. Um, well, you're going to do it that way. Yeah. I had one guy. Uh, I was working at this place, and, and one of the meals that we offered was, was uh, this chicken dish that was a, a half a chicken. I remember this. And, and this guy was like, I just want white meat. <laughs> 
You're like, that's not how this comes, dude. It's like literally half a chicken. Like, it's the right half or the left half. It doesn't matter which half you get, but you're getting all of it. <laughs> and he's like, no, I just want the white meat. I'm like, I can't. And like, can you talk to your manager? Sure. And I go, manager, I'm like, hey, this guy just wants white meat. And the manager's like, we don't do that. I know. <laughs> and so then he asked to actually speak to the manager himself. And finally the manager comes back and is like, just give it to him. Like, are you <laughs> kidding me? Like, we're just going to cut two chickens in half and just give them the white parts of both? That's, are we charging him for both? Nope. Oh, you're just bad at your job then, right? And he didn't like it when I said that, but. They should have charged him for both. I agree. Mm -hmm. I did, I used to work at for an Italian place that was not Olive Garden. And then uh, place, people would come in and be like, Olive Garden does it like this. Oh like, my! Then you should probably be gosh. in Olive Garden. <laughs> no, you're you're. Ugh, I have a story similar. Yeah. Uh, so I worked at an Italian place that was not Olive Garden, mm -hmm. and we did family style. It was a family style Italian place. And what, what does it mean, family style? Uh, everything regard? served in large to share portions. Oh, just with this. So, going on? like, we have our small dish and our large dish. Our small serves two to four. Okay. Our large serves four to. Six, I think it was. I don't remember. Right. I don't work there anymore. <laughs> um, and we had this lady come in, and she came in um, for dinner. Mm. And she sits down, and she's like scrutinizing the menu. And I, you know, I go up, I give her my spiel, and she's like, "Well, do you have breadsticks?" And I go, "No, no, we have, you know, we have Italian bread, and we dip it in the oil and the vinegar." And she goes, hmm. "Oh, okay." She's That's like, so yeah. much better. Yeah. It's so much better it's than so breadsticks. So much better. And she goes, well, do you have a soup and salad combo? And I go, uh, no, we do have soup and we do have salad, uh, but our salad feeds four. And it was just one lady. Yeah. And so I, I finally get the sense that she hasn't been here. And I'm like, are you waiting on any? Is anyone, because we're family style. Yeah. She's like, oh. I mean, I was like, we mean, we have lunch portions that are individual. I can get you a lunch menu and maybe we can honor it. So I go and I talk the manager into honoring, right. you know, the lunch menu, which we're really not supposed to do. But we did for this lady, and so she asks for something else. I, I forget what the heck it was. Um, and eventually she just gets frustrated and goes, I, I don't think I'm going to eat here. And I go, why? She's like, I just thought it'd be more like Olive Garden. And I kid you not, there was an Olive Garden right across the street. <laughs> I want so Olive what do Garden I do? style things without having to go to Olive Garden for it. Yeah. No. So I just laughed at her, and apparently that's not the appropriate response. But she was leaving anyway. Depends on who you ask. Yeah. So I'm noticing that our microphone is not picking things up right now, not the way it should. I don't know why. I mean, I kicked it earlier. You did kick it earlier. Let's it see. I made it angry. Ah, oh, God. How about that? Nope, still not working. What did you do, Kate? Did you mess with things? No. Were you messing? No messing. Hmm. You sure it's not? Woo! <laughs> it's picking up snap. Oh, there it goes. Okay. It seems to be working now. I don't know what that was about. So There's a lot of things that it just was not picking. Okay, we're we're going the snaps. The first 25 minutes are gonna be super super quiet. No, it was working, and then it wasn't. Like it was working for most of what we were saying, and then I looked over and it it was picking up some, but not everything. I don't know what the deal is. So at some point, there's gonna be like a real quiet, then an ear rape. Is that maybe? Ah! Yes. I now read. that's where it is, right there. <laughs> Headphone users, beware. Yeah. <laughs> Why did it get Why so quiet? It? I turned it up all the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope. That's how we keep people interested. <laughs> right. <laughs> By killing their eardrums. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Yeah, people love that shit. Again, uh, it's all a matter always of... Always keep uh, them guessing. <laughs> who you're talking to. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love ear rape. <laughs> this is the podcast for you. Uh, so is this just the... Uh, Obscure fetish episode, <laughs> talking yeah. about peeing on things, drinking God. pee, I eating pee, <laughs> or torture, or oh. torturing your ears. Like mm. someone's gonna have a blast listening to this. I did recently hear a joke that I liked, where it was like uh, a blacksmith is making a sword. He's like, "I'm almost done. I just gotta work out these kinks." And the sword goes, "I like feet." <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's an, and I'm not one to like kink shame people, but there's some of them I just don't get, like the urine thing or the feet thing, or some people apparently like, like being defecated on. Yeah, I, I don't get it. 
I don't understand. Mm -mm. I don't really want to understand, though. I mean, I... If someone was like, hey, Kate, you have this perfect opportunity to interview a person and figure out why, which is why they like being defecated, I'd be like, mm, I'll pass. <laughs> it's okay. I'd do that interview. I'd do yeah. that interview. Nah, the damn microphone thing is being weird again. Uh, why, why are you being ah! Oh, God. There you go. Is that what it takes? You just have to yell at it? <laughs> yell real loud. Weird. Uh, is it Kate's phone that keeps vibrating on the table making a lot of noise? It doesn't I, like your phone. I mm. attempted to that quiet. <laughs> I silenced it. You didn't. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. Yeah, so you're just gonna put it on the phone on the table again. We'll keep vibrating. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was that was the thought process. Jeremy joins us to look at the camera. Or not Jeremy, just Jarrett. I don't know. It's Hi, been Jared. a long week, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's Monday. Uh it's not, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> We always film on Tuesdays. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You had a long week too, it sounds like. <laughs> Thought it was Monday. No. So. Yeah, it's still being weird. Maybe I'll That's cut fine. some of this out. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Definitely cutting keeps... out those parts. Are you sure? No. They're delightful. Uh, yeah, they sure are. Um. So, tell me about your week. Ah, uh, not not much happened in there. No? No. Let's see. I, I did some binging. Um, I found out, because I bought a new PS4 recently. Yes. Um, I, for those of you who don't know, shared one with my ex, but he, he got custody of the old PS4. Who would know? Why would... I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? They just know everything about it. Yeah. Her. My various stalkers, <laughs> who I assume watch this right. to keep up with me, because I'm a charming lady. Of course. Yeah. All right. So, um, used to share it, lost custody. There yes. was a huge custody by battle. Yes. No, there wasn't. It was more like, actually, you, you put the most money into this. Gotcha. You know. uh, anyway, but I just got my own PS4. Mm -hmm. Dave was there. Um, and now I'm replaying all of my games so that I can get my data back. Mm -hmm. So you can have your game save files. You know, see, I I uh, used to live with somebody who had a PS3, and then I got an Xbox 360, and some of the games I got with it were the ones I'd already played on the PS3, mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna go back and play this shit. What like games? The, the first uh, Assassin's Creed. Oh, okay. Which I enjoyed. I enjoyed playing it, but that one was just but, tedious. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I don't want to go mm -hmm. back and play it again. Like I'd, I'd love to get those achievements because I, I was kind of an achievement whore for a while, but yeah, I don't want to go back and have to. Find all those little <coughs> flags again and, like, do the same thing over and over. I don't like thinking about achievements because my gamer score is so messed up right now. Because one game mm -hmm. has two achievements that you have to get together. One has a value of a 33. Mm -hmm. The other one is 32. I got the 32 one. So now my gamer score ends in a 2. <laughs> and <laughs> You're not okay with that. I am not... <laughs> <laughs> and the only other way to get the you had to get this other achievement, and it's on a playlist that's not like popular anymore. So you have to go into the one where they lumped all the playlists that no one liked into one playlist, and there's no guarantee you're gonna get it. What game? What are you talking about? It was Halo Four. Okay. It was like um, for like one of the DLCs. Mm -hmm. They just like okay, so these game modes aren't as popular, so we're gonna lump them into this one big playlist, and then. You know, they can play that. Yeah. So the people who do like that game mode has to play this playlist. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's no guarantee. You're, you're, you could be sitting there like, oh, okay, ten minutes in, I got the thing I wanted. Or four hours in, and I've been doing, you know, Griff Ball. <laughs> and it's just, oh, I'm so, I'm yeah. so upset. Like, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't like looking at it, because, like, I have... I have a, I'd say, a fair amount of gamer score, you know? Like, easily double than all my friends, but it's just... <laughs> Yeah, can't have that. I've got I've had games where like uh, an achievement will be worth one, but like and odds are with that game, you know, there'll be ways to get the other achievements well, that'll yeah. balance it out. And like I've got I, I checked all the other games I've played, and I've already got all the ones that would balance it out. <laughs> Your OCD just won't let you have that too, <laughs> dude. It's, yeah. I have bad OCD when it comes to certain things. Like I bought um, this one PlayStation game, uh, Near Automata. 
didn't have the case. It was the GameStops, you know, mm. whatever case. Yeah. That bothered me so bad. I went on eBay and I bought a case. Is that why that happens? What? Like, I've been on eBay looking and you'll for see games, cases. And it's just cases and cases um, and I cases. I assume that's one reason, but, I mean, there are, like, special cases, you know, like the steel books or something like that. Maybe people are like, oh, if a collector wants this, you know, I could probably make a couple bucks off of it. That's so ridiculous to me that that's a thing. That there's, like, collectible cases for video games. It works, though. I mm. guess. I mean, I spend a lot of money on collectible stuff. <laughs> yeah, I can't knock it. I think, in fact, my Tomb Raider case is a collectible case. It's yeah. kind of cool. It has a little booklet with fan art in it. I enjoyed it, but I'm a really big Lara Croft fan, so yeah. that appealed to me. But you bought, like, the whole... Like, if you already had the game, would you have just gone out and bought that case? No, probably no. not. I would do it, like, if my case broke or something. But I did yeah. spend the... Normally, I don't. Normally, I kind of wait for games to knock down in price, but I did spend the $60... Because that case was cool. Yeah, oh, 60 so. bucks. <laughs> I wish I could just spend that on a game. <laughs> like, I'm the kind of person, they'll see, like, a, you know, if it's a game I really, really want, collector's edition. Oh, why you gotta do this to me? <laughs> like, um, got the Destiny one. Yeah. Uh, the one that came, like, the first one that came with the ghost. Right. Spent too much money on that. Yeah. I mean, that was at least 180 bucks. Was, Jesus like, the stripping. Christ. Uh, Witcher 3, 160, easy. Fallout 4, 120. I, I, I drop this stuff without thinking about it sometimes. Oh my god, you do have Damn. a spontaneous shopping problem. Or my favorite was... so many Jeremy's. My favorite was um, went to a comic book store one day, walked in, I saw they had two of those really, really nice metal hilted lightsabers. Mm -hmm. I walked out with a lightsaber. Just one? You didn't buy both? No, because that would have been... Were they the same color? No, one was Yoda, one was Darth Vader. And you didn't get both? No. Wow. I spent $200. On a lightsaber <laughs> that I don't even have room to display properly, so it is in the corner of my room. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you like walked into my room, you just see the shelf with all these statues and steel books and other collectible junk. Mm -hmm. It's it's sort of like my room upstairs is. Uh, I have what used to be an entertainment center, but now they make TVs that are way too big to fit in it. Mm -hmm. And it's got, like, these things on the side to put, like, CDs in or whatever. And uh, now it just holds all my, like, collectible crap um, or just gifts that I've been given over the years. Like, I've got um, cufflinks that are, like, Green Lantern cufflinks that I got from being in a wedding one time. Or uh, I have a pint glass, again, from another wedding, that's got my name in Gallifreyan, the oh, Lunch cool. of the Time Awards from Doctor Who. Um I've got it's several, crazy. like, groomsman gifts and stuff just sitting on there, not doing anything. Um, a a Lego uh, Star Transformer Scream. Starscream up there. Which, is, it's not even Lego. It's like some... It's Creo. It, is it Creo? Mm -hmm. I don't remember the name. But, uh, yeah. And then uh, it, I'm quickly running out of room, and I keep getting more things to put there. <laughs> I know that. Yeah, like, I don't... I've got stuff that just sits in my closet because I, I ran out of room for it. I don't have a closet. <laughs> He doesn't have a closet. Yeah. I saw that. His I stuff is I in did. my closet. <laughs> yeah. In fact. Yeah. Dave. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, this house, when it was built, which is where we have the studio, um, was built poorly by this local uh, contractor guy. And so outside it resembles a castle, but it looks like it was made like in three different pieces. <laughs> um so, like, one part is brick, one part is stone, the other part is, like, siding. And inside, it's, like, there's just parts where you can see, like, we have drop ceiling, and so if you look up, you can see, like, different grades of insulation just, like, haphazardly thrown in. Um, and then in my room, one of the walls doesn't go straight up. It actually bows out like this, or for you guys, like this. And so we were building, we were planning on building like a bathroom and closet. And so as we're measuring it, like, why do we keep getting different measurements? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like I measured it earlier and it was this many, but now I'm measuring it here and it's more and it doesn't, I don't get, oh, the wall bows out. It's got like, our house has a muffin top. Are so you fat shaming your house? No. Yes. I don't know. Damn. Yes. And we can't even blame the guy that built it anymore because he died. No, you can still blame him. We do. 
We do. So basically what you're saying is, like, if you, like, called someone to come inspect the house, you'd be, like, afraid of what they would say. I mean, there was an inspection done before the house was bought, but apparently they didn't notice all that. <laughs> so. It has character. It's just, like, the first so time I walked in and I, I saw everything, I didn't want to say anything, but, like, you know, that's just kind of odd. Just, like, the drop ceiling? Yeah, like, that just looks like. Like a building's, you know, ceiling rather than like a like home a ceiling. ceiling. Yeah. That's what I thought too. Like, I just that just struck me as odd. Like, why would a house, you know, have <laughs> like something you'd see in like a school or right. you know it wherever? Does. And I don't have a good answer for that. It is. It's got a very industrial feel. This yeah. is a homey feel. It does. Um. And then there's like parts that weren't finished or something. Like there's a slab out back where I guess it was supposed to be like a hot tub. Well, there's no hot tub there. <laughs> there it's so there's just like slab. slab of concrete with this like this nice with slab. this like ditch in the middle. It's <laughs> obviously the, the where we stuff. commit our Satan worshiping and sacrifices. Yeah. And then there was like part of an awning that's that's there. Like it looks like part of a roof, but they didn't finish that, and that's just like kind of falling off now. <laughs> so this place was just built really weird. And I don't want to mention the guy's name on the show, mm-hmm. but like when we moved to Dawsonville, we found out his name was like profanity here. Like people hate him or hated him uh, yeah. because of like he, was he just didn't. Bad. I mean, he didn't just build houses. He also owned a lot of houses. And like apparently he was a dick when it came to like renting and stuff or oh. something. But um, yeah, people, people didn't like him. There's a road named after him here, though. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. If you live in Dawsonville, you probably know who we're talking about. Who I'm talking about. They're not talking about him. So, I'm starting a new job. I'm going to sell insurance. I passed my test today, actually. My very first insurance test, which was hard as fuck. Congratulations, Dave. I don't know if you've ever looked into what constitutes insurance and how to deal with all that shit. It hard. I, I haven't. I don't pay attention to insurance things. That's because you're young. Yes. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that yet. Yeah, well, I'm finally got myself out of the restaurant business, and I <laughs> don't jinx me like that. Man. You will <laughs> always be in the restaurant business. No, I don't want to. Uh, One day in the future, you will be at your lowest point. You'll be back at Papa, <laughs> at you know Papa's, your dad's, <laughs> you know, yeah. and uh, yeah, you'll be in the kitchen and. The policy of not needing the place where we work. Here. I believe that's what we call a Freudian slip. Mm. I tried to save it, but then you, um, you know, solidified that yeah, I messed it. up. <laughs> so thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I think Justin's done that before too about the place he works. But go back and try to find that. See, I could have saved it. Yeah, I could have, but then you just straight up, you know, yeah, that's that's it. Like, okay. <laughs> I tried. I'm never going back. That's what that's what you say. That is what I say. That's what I said. Yeah. I came back. Well, Austin said the same thing. Yeah. And guess what? He's back. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You know Jennifer? She said that three times. Yeah, but she's still not there. No, she's gone. But <laughs> she, she still did it three times. So yeah, the restaurant business, it just pulls you back in. It really does. I mean and that did happen to me. I left the my gig at the at the Italian place. And worked, like, I drove a truck for a while, I worked in radio for a while, and then suddenly I was out of a job, and I needed money, and I went back to the restaurant. Same. I had a fancy office job. Yeah. And then they, you know, relocated. Yeah. And reallocated (laughs) and didn't need me. Yeah. So, here I am. (laughs) The thing about restaurant gigs is, like, as much as we might hate them, it's always there. Mm -hmm. And that's that's one thing I always found funny when, like... Uh, managers would say things like, you know, well, if you don't like it, you can just leave, you know, or we can re- you're replaceable. Like, you know, I can go to literally any other restaurant and work. It's also funny when they say you're replaceable. Like, it depends on who you are because there are some people, yeah, who are replaceable. Yeah. And there are people like, you know, if they left, the entire restaurant's going to fall apart. Yeah. Like, there is no replacing them. Like, yeah. if I left or, you know, Alex or Speedy left... <laughs> You know, they're just screwed. Yeah. Like, there is no saving that restaurant at that point. It's, and it's one of those things where you have, they, 
these restaurants start relying mm -hmm. on these on these people, and then they leave because, of course, they're going. Like most people are not trying to make a career at a restaurant, oh. and then they eventually no. leave, and 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 the management or whatever did not take into account, like, oh, What's we're not going to have this person. This forever. is the one that does their job. <laughs> yeah, it's like the certain restaurants, though, because there are the people who do, you know. Go yeah. like to the really nice schools for cooking. Oh yeah, and like they will make a really good living off yeah. that. Well, then there's the people who are just like, but I just need gas. Yeah, you're part time with your high school kids and stuff like mm -hmm. that. You're you know, a lot of people and some people are you know they only work nights or whatever. Those are not the people that want to stick around a restaurant forever. Yeah. Um, I have to say I enjoy it on some level though. It's nice to have that people to pal around with and it is yeah. easy money i mean i worked in an office and it was just me mm -hmm. so every day i went there and for seven hours it was just me right and i had like there were other people but they never worked with me if like if if they were there it meant i wasn't yeah so i worked at a um i i did two different office jobs i worked in an apartment leasing firm mm -hmm. and then i worked at a storage unit leasing facility and that was by far my most interesting experience. Is it the loneliest one? The loneliest one, yeah. but also the one with the weirdest stories. <laughs> so, um, uh, I actually ended up managing the property, and what I learned about that is I never want to manage anything again. Because <laughs> um, you have a lot of liability, right. and you have to deal with a lot of weird scenarios. For instance, um, I had a homeless lady living on my property. Did you know that? No. Like, oh. <laughs> No. So um, I had my RM, my regional manager, come in one day, and she was like, hey, uh, I think this lady might be living on your property. And I had started to suspect things, too, but I was like, oh, yeah? And she goes, yeah, she's just always, you know, she, she came in when I came in. But she didn't leave, to my knowledge, right. ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. And she was storing her vehicle on property. Mm-hmm. Um, so she came into the office to pay her bill and she's talking to me about her car and I'm trying to be smooth about it. I'm like, Hey, uh, you know, though, you can't live in your car in your vehicle. Like she's like talking about storing her vehicle. I'm like, your vehicle can stay in there overnight. You can't stay in your vehicle in there overnight. And she's like, Haha, I know. And I'm like, do you really though? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I don't see her again for a week and I assume that she's not living there or whatever and it's fine. And mm. So we do these daily inspections every day where you drive around your little golf cart and you make sure that all the units are locked mm -hmm. um, and that they're locked properly. Um, and if they're not, we assume that someone has vacated. Yeah. So I go by her unit and it's unlocked and I'm like, oh, maybe she left. Uh, I hope she left. Otherwise, you know, she's got a car in there. Right. That's not safe. And our gate was down. Uh, so the gate that's supposed to keep the property secure from trespassers and people breaking in was down and we'd actually had like two break-ins on the property the same week and i got in trouble for that and it was i was like no no more break-ins <laughs> someone's not coming on this property and stealing a car so i open up the unit <laughs> and this woman is i kid you not naked <laughs> completely naked sleeping under her car under the car under the car and as i like roll up the roller thing she kind of startles a little <laughs> bit and i startle a little bit and she's like Oh, you should have knocked first. I'm like, you shouldn't be naked. <laughs> and I just yell it out. <laughs> um, and she's like, well, you turn around. And I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> and so I do. And she like rolls down her little roller door and she comes out. And uh, she's a Spanish woman and she speaks very little English. So she's yelling at me, in saying Spanish. that it's impolite. No, like in broken oh, English. She's uh, like, You're, it's impolite. You trespassed upon me. And I'm like, what you did was impolite. <laughs> You're naked. <laughs> and she had on like this little sweater thing, kind of similar to what I'm wearing, but it was yeah. open. And so she's trying to tell me, and it's got like, it's one of those threadbare sweaters, you know, where you can still see through it. Yeah. And so she's like covering herself. She's like, I'm not, I'm not naked. I have on this sweater. I have on this sweater. I'm not naked. I'm like, okay, well, there's not a lot I know, but there's a few things I do know. You can't be in your unit sleeping. You can't be in your unit naked, <laughs> and you're not supposed to be in your unit with the door closed. Yeah. And she's like, but I'm not really naked. And I'm like, okay, well, if you can't go out, <laughs> if you can't go to church like this, ma'am, uh, you, then you're, you're some level of naked. Yeah. And so we go back and forth on this for a little while, and I have to call my regional manager, and she's like, yeah, you have to, you have to nix the girl. You have to kick her out. Yeah. I felt bad because it occurred to me I wasn't just kicking this lady out of a storage unit. I'm also kicking her out of her... Her home. Her home. 
Um, so it's awkward all around for me. Right. And I'm filing a report, <clears throat> and I guess she gets really angry about the being kicked out and also about the report. So she comes into the office, and she tells me that she's going to get an attorney and sue me for defamation of character. <laughs> And for I being naked, there, yeah. <laughs> and I sit there and I'm like, okay, how have I defamed you? And she goes, oh well, you're writing in that report that I was seen naked. I don't want to. I don't want anyone to know that. And I go, well, it's not like it's going to be published in the New York Times, yeah. man. This is just going to my higher ups. They don't give a crap. Um, and That's she's like, no, no, no. But I'm very, you know. And I'm like, okay, well, what, what would you like me to say instead of you were naked? And she's like, partially clothed. And so I go, okay, and I retype partially clothed, and I let her look at the whole thing, and I'm like, are you satisfied? And she's like, yeah, I'll go now. Nice. Yeah. So. <laughs> I had, uh, when when uh, when I was moving out of my old place to move into this place, uh, we were actually homeless for a few months because there was a lot of issues with actually buying this, this house. <coughs> um so we had to put our stuff in like several different storage units. And, and by we, I mean myself and, and my two roommates that I had at the time. Um, and so there's one storage unit that I got and then two others that, that uh, our roommate got. And uh, the one I got was uh, I went in and there was this woman. She was there by herself. And she was very nice, a very attractive lady. And she seemed to be kind of flirting with me a little bit. A, yeah. little, a little like the touch of the shoulder kind of stuff. I was like, oh, okay. And then she'd mention her husband. You know, like, what is happening right now? And then every time I went there to pay for my thing, it was the same thing every time. Like, she'd be very kind of overly familiar and then mention her husband. Like, she's reminding herself, like, I shouldn't sleep with this guy because I'm married. <laughs> but that was weird. I didn't live in the storage unit, though, uh, naked or otherwise. So. Partially clothed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, partially clothed. Sorry. Sorry, lady. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I did, but I know what you mean about, like, uh, being alone at work. Like, the one of the radio stations I worked at, there would be times I was alone for, like, I, I would have to, there were some days I had to work from, like, 7 in the morning until, like, 5 o'clock at night or something. And the only time there were other people were there, and this was usually on weekends, so the only time other people were there, there was a live show going on. For the most part, it was a, it was a pre-recorded stuff. But there would be like hours of the day where I'm the only one in the building. It's the worst. And and I would I end up start bringing in like a blanket and a pillow and just sleeping on the couch in the lobby um, when no one was there. And then I found out I could get to Netflix on some of the computers there. And so I started like I'd make a little pallet on the floor and then put the monitor down in front of me <laughs> and just fall asleep watching Netflix. And this is this is the very early days when when uh, Netflix had just started going to streaming, and so there wasn't a lot. So there was a lot of really really bad movies on Netflix at the time. There still are a lot of really, really bad, bad movies. movies. Yes. Yeah. But back then, that's pretty much all the movies that were on there. Yeah, it's all these like B-rated things. Yeah. My favorite is when Netflix first started streaming and they had all these B-rated knockoffs yeah, yeah. of like actual popular mm -hmm. shows. One of my favorites was Chop Kick Panda, <laughs> which was like the generic of Kung Fu Panda. That's great. I remember seeing one called Transmorphers. Yeah. Which was the, the ripoff of Transformers, which I never watched. I, I kind of wish I had because you know it's going to be awesomely bad. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be able to I always to think it. about, you no. know, this generation of people, too. We don't realize it, but we are probably the most privileged generation mm -hmm. in the world. Think about just, you know, 20, 30 years ago. No. Yeah. Or even further. Like, imagine, too, or even trying to go back even further and try to explain to someone, you know... From the early 1900s, yeah, uh, I can just pick up the phone and the food will come to me. <laughs> What's a telephone? Yeah, yeah, just or you know any of these things or oh yeah, um, that information. I, I just I just press a button on my phone and speak into it, <laughs> and that information. What button on your phone? Just comes right to it. Me. Has a, it has a grindy wheel. It has a crank. <laughs> So, I yeah. mean, you know, a few hundred years ago, owning a book was yeah. a sign of just great material wealth. I mean, just owning one book. Yeah, the, when you think about it, not, I mean, we are the most privileged, but every generation is the most privileged compared to the ones before it, I think. Correct. Um, when, at least when it comes with technology and stuff like that. I mean, cause, you know, we had phone, you know, phones and then we had 
uh, radio and we had records and yeah, you know, truly CDs right now and, this is the time to be alive. Yeah, I mean definitely every time was the time to be alive. This really is. Well, this is the good one. We we, we don't have polio. <laughs> That's true. You know the little things <laughs> we take. Except those damn anti vaxxers Um yeah. <laughs> Man, I have hard stances on things. <laughs> Please vaccinate your damn kids. I don't yeah. want to get sick. I don't want to get pulled. There's worse things than autism. Yeah. There's not really a direct correlation, just saying. There's not. Mm. Mm. I like when that's the argument, but I, I wouldn't want my kid to be autistic. So I think polio is what you're yeah, saying. You just want your kid to die, and everybody else's kid to die. Yeah. yeah. It's also just funny just hearing, like, not only the people who, like, try to sell this stuff, mm. but the people who believe it. Yeah, mm-hmm. like my friend, um, his older brother is married, and um, his wife is one of these people that believes this stuff. Oh, no. no. So I'm not sure if their son has the vaccinations. I feel like the brother would have done it. Yeah. But like, so, like, they had a dog. Um, and this dog, I guess, had cancer or something, or some kind of, like, really bad disease. Right. And so this, uh, I, I forget, it was something stupid, like, her yoga instructor or something <laughs> was like, no, so don't do this. If you do this for your dog, like it was like something like honey and, you know, another weird combination of something, mm-hmm. it will actually get rid of the cancer. What's well, my yoga instructor? Yeah, like, no that's medical what I'm background thinking. Says like, so. <laughs> why? And she believed him. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, why? There's it's so a many times. Yoga, dude. <laughs> And I, I there, mean, there's some homeopathic remedies that are like, okay, I, I see mm-hmm. where you got yeah. that, but then, you know. You mix so honey there's... with pine salt and it's going to kill the cancer. <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> there, there's it, several people who I'm friends with on Facebook for one reason or another who, and they, they'll post things on, like, just these random pictures and it's like, this thing is bad because of this. And then, but there's no sources or anything, and I'll just do this cursory Google search about this chemical or whatever, and like, actually, this does this, this, and this. And they're like, uh, well, it, it's still bad for you. I'm like, uh, whatever, dude. It's still bad. I don't understand. And th- that's one of the bad things about the generation we live in with the internet and everything is that there are people who believe everything they see on the internet and they mm-hmm. will tell other people about that thing and those people will believe them and there's so much bullshit in the world. Because no one bothers to actually search no, yeah, no for information. Yeah, no They just see this thing and they're like, that fits with my biases. I'm definitely going to repost this. <laughs> and and then you have a generation or several people in that generation who are idiots about things when the actual information is it's a click generation. away. On oh. behalf of all the millennials, I apologize. <laughs> oh, you kids. We can do better, guys. You kids we can do better. Better, but we choose not to. Because mm. there's so many dang memes out there to look at instead. Hey, <laughs> you <laughs> don't mess with my memes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I am a functional millennial, and I enjoy memes, Dave. Mm-hmm. I love the memes. I, I can't lie. There's I don't a meme dis- right there. Yes, there is. I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way. <laughs> I'm going to be the, what's behind door number three? <laughs> yeah. I don't have a problem with memes or anything. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying every now and then, do your goddamn research. Yeah. <laughs> I hate when you find a meme, though, that's so good that no other memes are meme enough for you. Yeah. yeah. Can you define a meme? Happiness. Either of you? <laughs> <laughs> Happiness? <laughs> My reason to go Joy on. <laughs> contained in a picture. That is somehow so applicable and relevant that you just have to take a moment and be like, God damn! Or, but memes don't have to be pictures. Or a picture so ridiculously stupid with a caption that just is like, you know, I get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Do either of you actually know about the first memes that came about? Yeah, I know about early memes. Like what? What do you think is the earlier memes? I don't know, like, the earliest, but, like, I remember there's the, uh, you know... One I use and modify is the Leroy Jenkins. Okay, yep. That was that was pretty early on from World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there was like the... I don't know, there's like keyboard cat. And <laughs> yeah, that was one. There was uh, the All Your Baser Belong to Us. I Yes, I remember that. That was one of the very first memes ever. 
See, I and hate that you've asked me this because, like, I know these. I just can't like bring <laughs> oh. them to my brain to say them. I remember, I remember when that came out because someone actually wrote, um, "Make your time," on the wall of one of the the buildings of the classes I was taking um, in my like second year of college in two thousand one. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's that. There's the Numa Numa Kid. Oh, yeah. I know that one. Yeah. You, I've heard you playing that song like across I the hall. Freaking <laughs> love that song. Yeah, I don't know the name of it or who plays it. Alright, sorry. You can get sued by some <laughs> Swedish person. Um, but yeah, like I don't know. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think she's sorry. She's not <laughs> I'm sorry. not sorry. Oh wait, sorry, not sorry, because I'm a millennial. <sighs> yeah. Does that mean sorry. we're not supposed to be sorry about things, or? I don't know what it means. <laughs> Damn millennials! <laughs> with your memes and your music. <laughs> See, now you're just showing that you're old. I am. Get with the times, old man. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be with it. <laughs> and it changed what it was. Now what I'm at, what I'm with isn't it. Sometimes I don't feel like I fit in, though. No. Even just from people who are a few years younger than me. Mm. No, I, I get it. Like, I was at work, and I had to go... There was, like, we have coolers, so if I had to, you know, get down. And then when I stood up, both of my knees popped, and my first thought was, I don't like this. My <laughs> knees just popped. I'm getting old. And as I thought about it more, I'm like, I am old because I think people younger than me are wrong. <laughs> And I've, I, t I tell that, you know, I told that to Austin. He's like, uh, um, yeah. Just like, I just. You know. Austin is the 17 year old dishwasher that works where he does. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I should have. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've always found myself hanging out with younger people. Yes. Um, and I don't know if that's, I don't know why. It's just what older people suck. Not all of them. It's because there I, is I'd that. say it's a healthy mix. I'm like the middle child in my friend group, yeah. more than likely. Kind of, yeah. Because there's like that healthy divide between like, you know, the people who are older that are like old fashioned mm -hmm. and then people who aren't like as old fashioned, right. you know, like the older people who are like, oh yeah, you know, this is cool. I like, like this. Like, okay, that's cool. I actually could talk to you about something while it's yeah. like back in my day, you know, <laughs> we didn't have... Your fancy dance. Ah, you can just stop right there, man. <laughs> okay, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Susan. Would you like to talk about? I yeah. want to talk about the uh, playing Jacks down by the soda fountain. <laughs> I just like the insinuation too that because I'm a millennial, I'm automatically not appreciative or lazy. I actually had a manager at my job say something to me and I'm like really because I'm one of the you know he was making a general comment not about me specifically right. but about millennials and he was like oh they're all lazy and entitled and I was like arguably actually all the millennials who are servers at my job work 10 times harder than some of the older people and are a lot less whiny and complacent some of them don't no offense some of them don't <laughs> some of them don't as well yeah um, we won't talk about that and, and but you find that in any generation you find the people who who are productive members of society, and people who aren't. And it's not yeah. just the millennials. It's not just the Gen Xers. It's not just the baby. Like, it's every generation is like that. I Some people suck. That's just how the world is. I think it's common, too, for every generation to have looked at the generation after them and go, oh, it's messed up, you know, yeah. this is surely the end. And it, it never is. Mm -mm. never is. The world continues. Yeah. Although, and I don't know, the inheriting, like, the freaking burning cusp that we inherited, I, I don't know, <laughs> actually. This might be the last of days. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. Huh. Will we? Start saving Maybe. your caps now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was actually thinking about Fallout today, and I was like, why did they decide on bottle caps? Probably to be their currency. <laughs> because it I, it even showed that like, like pre-war money is there, and you can trade it for bottle caps. So why not Maybe just it's keep because, currency? like, I don't know, they just see the, it as worthless. Like, the, it's not that time anymore. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is that it would work universally. Like, you wouldn't have to worry about, like, uh, exchange rates or anything. 
if you just have a single currency. Given Except that, Except if you get the Nuka-Cola Quantum Caps, Dave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> those are worth a pretty penny. What's a penny? Mm. <laughs> You're right. It's worth a pretty cap. Pretty cap. Well, I don't know. We're coming on to the end of the show, though. So what did you learn today, Kate? Today I learned that Jeremy is a compulsive spender. Wow. <laughs> of <Dang>. American dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Had to be specific there. Yes. And what did you learn? That I got to be a part of the fetish episode. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no one can take that from me. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned that even without Jason and Justin here, we can still have a productive show. Define productive. A show where we didn't really have a whole lot of like absent pauses or like awkward <clears throat> pauses and stuff like that. Go us! Because that's the way. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what we're ending on. The way. The way. Have Wait, a great night. What? what? Dave? I literally oh. just said that. <laughs> you did. I learned that Kate doesn't pay attention to what I say. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jeremy, Adam, and I are going to get up and just have you on camera being embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> it's Good not night, that everybody. different from any other day. Yeah.